That's right, bacon crickets. Starting to get the heat on, a lot of sunshine. That ain't going to cut it. We really have to respond. We have to respond a whole lot better. We really can't make any excuses. I don't know what else to say. We can make all the excuses in the world, and things are not going to be working out so well. Those with the plan are our problem. And we don't have a plan. We've got a double problem. And there's a, a lot that the thing that we're up against is organized that we have no real clue about. And I try to bring this to you every week on any subject matter just to hope something interests somebody. I don't understand how there's not just something out there that interests anybody uh, enough that we should have everybody doing something. I shouldn't even have to, I'd be just sitting back here laughing and how good we're knocking them dead and getting back what we need to get back to get this stuff uh, so that the world isn't a threat to everybody. You said the world is a funny place. Be in it, but not of it. You ever figured out that little that little clue? Well, for many, many years I've been working on it, and I think I've got a good handle on it. I hope you'd listen pretty close, because it seems that the things that I've been saying are coming up to pass, and as we can learn more and better on how to deal with it, we do, in fact, set it back. And there's a bunch of different levels, so it's it's just not uh, easily identified. And for those of you on post, podcast and podcast, recast, or whatever place you find this broadcast after the live broadcast, it'll be BTWRLM321. And by that time, I'll have all the broadcaster links up if you ever want to go to where I've been kind of referring to. It's just a notice to me to notice notice you. Without any direction, I just have to kind of make this up. I wing it, folks, and we just kind of come out of my mind real quick. Don't have any real more thoughts about that, and we can we can get to the point when you have a point to make, and then I can show you better if you need uh, how to how to work that out. And I can just tell you, most people don't have a really we don't have a clue of what's up, and we'll we'll fight we'll uh, we'll fight the, anybody who may have the right clue uh, more than we'll fight those that that'll give you a. a send you down the river. In fact, without getting too deep, I heard a little bit more of that here. Someone turned me on to an interview. My name actually came up, which was interesting. Never heard anything about this before. And it was very interesting for me. It's an observation on how people hornswoggle others and what they, what people tend to want to agree to and what the ridiculous answers that come up around all that. And so it was interesting listening to someone mis- misrepresent what I do in order to gain some favor with people and uh, gain their trust and gain gain their uh, mind and g- g- mind control and it's all it's all in- incorrect absolutely incorrect and then from that people make bad decisions and it, interesting i just noticed i see talking to one of my colleagues about how this dynamic is just watching how people be mind controlled without them even knowing it I'm pausing here. I want you all to think about that. You all can be mind control without even being known. So that's what's going on. And uh, watching people do that is pretty interesting. And watching people absorb that and start responding through it is even more interesting. What's disappointing is that they're not going down the right path and they're going to be hurt or at least become ineffectual. If nothing and worse, they'll do. They actually started coming up with the things I tell you all not to do. Don't jeopard, put yourself in jeopardy by thinking you're going to be so smart to re, react instead of doing what you need to do. Anyway, I, I'll just leave it right there on that. Just understand that there may be some people out there with information for you, and other people that tell you about them are likely not going to tell you correctly about them. They should just be referring you to those people instead of categorizing or mischaracterizing the information with a name. Remember I told you, you put a title on something and you can cap some people mind, people's mind with it. Then you can drag their, it's a ring in their nose that you drag them along. People know how to do this that will do that to you. It's a lot of work to be able to see how someone might be doing that to you. And a lot of that's just having the comprehensive knowledge I've been telling you, you can have yourself. Maybe not on as broad as I've come, and I can't say I've done everything, but a lot. Yeah, but on your specific issues, you can learn how someone grabs the dialogue from you and, and gets you to agree. And so I'll stop right there because I can't talk to, I'm not going to talk about that conversation. It was just an interesting, an interesting observation. 
And it's a simple techniques that are being used. And you misstate the you misstate the problem, you misstate the condition, and then you interject that you have a better knowledge, and then you move with that, and you grab the the mind of people, and the, eventually their actions, which which is really well, and also not just their action, but their devotion even, and you, and you all will do it unless you know a more comprehensive knowledge than the one that's trying to take you down uh, and de deceiving you. Uh, so, oh, and, uh, for, before I get, before I forget, I kind of got off last week too, but I'll try and stay a little closer to the tabs this week. I had a question. I don't even remember if I asked it or not. I thought it was kind of interesting. Those of you that have been doing the trivia at RLM chat uh, right before the broadcast on Grimner's uh, broadcast, which you all can jump in and do if you want. It's a little game they play. A little question pops up, you give an answer. If you if you have uh, typing skills and and um, uh, trivial uh, uh, memory pursuit mind type stuff, and then you'll be able to do good, uh, good with it. But I, I, I ran across something just to, just happened to run across. So I thought this would be a good addition for you all at the, in the chat for this. And I'm going to give you an answer to this. I'll ask the question first, and uh, then I'll I'll give you an answer to where I what the answer is in a little bit. But you won't get any points for it. But it, I thought it was kind of an interesting observation for those of us reading along and trying to figure out things and understanding trying to find definitions and how easily we could be, I said easily, you know, we can be, Vince, we could uh, we can be misdirected and how that feeds into other systems and other mindsets to, so that we can be set up for the takedown in the future. Now here's a little question. Uh, what, um, that I'll, again, I'll come back to it and give you an answer in the future here. You give you some time in the chat to give your answers. If you give me the chat, uh, we used to do this too when I was responding. You put your put your stuff that you want intend for me in short sentences and in, 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 in capital letters. It's easier for me if I look over. I can pick that up a lot easier than trying to decipher a question or something. But uh, for those of you that uh, run across and read and want to find out more, I found this little this little definition or this de description pretty interesting. It might be educational, maybe maybe not. What um, what does this define, this question here? What does this define when I say, theoretically, there is no state control? So what does this define, that theoretically, there is no state control? Toss out your answers in the chat room. If you're in there, you can jump in at reallibertymedia.chat. Get on reallibertymedia.com and jump in if you want to. Uh, and... See what we come up with. I don't know. I thought this was fascinating. I, I know how I run across these again, doing some research. Things come around, and I just take notice. It may not even be something I'm even focused on. It's information that comes up to the search engines that you're having to filter through and make sense of. So, or it makes sense, and you pick it up, and you start realizing as you apply it to the wider world. Maybe there's some people that don't quite understand what they've been dealing with. And then you also see if they do understand this and they're saying this point, then maybe they're confusing others. Again, it's a con constant battle to make sure that you're keeping your foundation as solid as possible. And uh, that's why I, said I went to the possibilities and probabilities and categories of things that you may have a line of evidence that builds a certain uh, proof on its own. And I say proof is a question because we have other proofs that could be done. Not one of which may actually be the proof, but any of which could appear to be. And you start to think about the facts and evidences that you looked in the world, not opinions, but you start finding it out for yourself and you dig deep enough. And you start building these categories and possibilities. And also all helps, it also helps to figure out when someone's speaking and they start lo loading those facts up, you'll know that they're speaking in that line and you can see whether or not for yourself that was a possibility, a probability, or a fact of what's going on. And that's one of the techniques I use over time. I can tell exactly what someone's going to, I can tell where they're going bef almost before they get started. Uh, just name a couple things and I already know tip typically where they're going to go. There's very few people that are so open, uh, uh, it's not my, cre and it's not creative either. It's uh, the ability to bring facts together in such a way that there's no, not many unique minds that way. And so uh, it's it's kind of predictable. Now that doesn't mean that there's not that unique unique mind out there. But I say something else. You find that unique mind, and they're holding a a, a position that may be contrary to your well found foundation. You may be dealing with the devil. Be careful. And that's another way you show. You got to really qualify all this stuff. 
And it's a lot of times I just won't jump into things that are just unproven or just opinions or won't get me anywhere anyway. I mean, who cares? You know, not to jump on this thing, but like the, well, I don't even want to jump on anything. Any of these ideas where they cause division, I, I typically don't engage. I've made my decision on one side or the other or not at all. It's not important. And I move to what I want to do. As I said last week, choose something, folks. Just find something. Don't stop making the excuses and choose something and get involved and focus on that to the literal exclusion of most everything else. And again, there's life that has to be lived so that you can't. That's one of the priorities. But I'm talking about opinions and ideas and things. Stop the noise in your head about all that. And focus, and you'll have more time in your mind to focus on things as well. Right now, we get too too much information, and we're not able to uh, filter it. And uh, I don't mean just filter or filter out so that you're thinking you're bre- breathing the pristine air of your own mind. No, that you're bringing stuff in that works as information you need to use on some project that you've established. Something you wrong you want to make right. Not even that. Something you want to make more right. Something that you want to see in the world that doesn't happen. Something that doesn't happen enough. And as I say that, just quickly, I don't say this very much, and so maybe I should say more. Thank you, Grammy Mary, for, again, I think about it every time I have to jump in and do my post-production at Spreaker. I appreciate that you set that count up. You continue feeding that account. It makes it, that's one of the steps that makes it a little bit easier for it. So I don't say it enough. Thank you for your contribution there. And that doesn't happen enough for people. Not that we ask a whole lot about the donations, but anywhere, any way we can help, folks. I don't know if you know this, but a whole bunch more people got knocked off of social media. So, in fact, I lost a couple people, and I was been thinking about that. Not only are they knocking it off because it's of an ideological problem, I'm not able now to speak to those people. And the problem with that is if, if I have to say something that's, I'm not knocked off, apparently I'm kosher, but... Again, and I, you know I'm not, but in relative to think, I'm saying you got to get something done and you're going to take someone behind the woodshed and you're going to teach them the principles that were violating somebody or yourself. That's not kosher with this system. How I'm still here is kind of interesting as well. But they're knocking people out that if you thought they were no good and you thought I'm okay because I'm still here, then my message to them is not being done to be adjusting that. And so this is, I haven't really thought through that more, but I want you to know that there's people being knocked off the social media uh, more and more and more. I don't know what they're going to think they're going to get up with. A bunch of slaveholders in the, in the hold of this, the, the Twitter tannic or whatever the the face palm or whatever the whatever the hell it is that they're they think they're making. It's just a it's just this cesspool of, of nonsense, and that's what they really want. But then where does everybody communicate? And that means that we have to kind of bring up some more additional things and be in other places. And that's partly why I branched out a little bit. I don't go too much. I can't keep up with it all. Like to bit shoot and and we, and, well, we've got Spreaker and YouTube and BitChute and, and, and RLM itself and iHeart. I'm on iHeart, folks. What, why I don't get more people in is kind of an interesting thing. And yet I also realize now that they take people down that follow me, they're not going to get what my guide, guide my pathfinding might give to them. And so we got a pretty a real big problem in this communication. But uh, now getting into getting into the tab so I get moving on here quick. Remember now, for those of you that that might not want to answer, what does this describe? Well, the theoretically, there is no state control. What does that describe? Getting over to uh, the insanity of the world and what's going on in the world, uh, and the I keep looking. I couldn't think of anything more than what I keep telling you. Look in the Middle East. You look over in any part of the world. The United States is doing something. And then I say, look back in this carnival mirror back because that's reflecting back on what they're doing to you. You may not see it, but it's because a lot of the damage is transparent. A lot of We don't know how to think about what our rights really are. We say they're there, and we can see the guideline of the Constitution, but, you know, those were only the enumerated ones. There was a whole lot of other ones. And then I'm trying to show you within the land law, within that authority that was established, there was things that those, those entities cannot touch, and one of them is the land disposal, because the land was given to the people. And it was an obligation. And there's a whole other dynamic goes. And like I said, being mis- misrepresented by someone else in order for that one to, to gain some favor in the listenership uh, is how this thing works. You've got to listen to what I'm saying and not allow the, su- uh, the subtlety to confuse you. Uh, but don't apply someone else's ideas. Uh, this law of the land to the exclusion of, of even the governments is really a key power to focus on. And this is what we need because we weren't around when they wrote this stuff up. 
uh, how this thing is supposed to work. The question came up, where, what's international law? Well, it's actually not a law. It's norms and standards and guidelines but between which people who can kill masses of other people, governments, uh, agree to ex coexist. So there's no international law. So when I say international law, I'm talking about these norms. And if you didn't pick that trick up here, see, you're missing the subtlety with which I'm bringing. I, I don't go through, I don't give you a whole definitional list on every show and what are the words I'm going to use. You have to understand there's a reality about it. And there's those that there's, there's something that people make up. We say these terms, but they mean they're like it's all in code. I don't care where you go. I don't care what you try to do to 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 avoid it. It's everywhere. And so you just I've just learned. Okay, uh, these are the jurisdictions. And my life has gotten a whole lot more organized to be able to think about this stuff. I don't get all balled up about a lot of stuff anymore. I put it where it is, and I start dealing with it at that level. But in, what's this international law? Well, it's just norms and customs that uh, that b b governments, brutes, uh, get uh, understand amongst the, each other. It actually came in uh, because all, all nations are actually driven by their mer mercantile. And that's kind of what this is, actually agreement so they can, can you heard it the russia said it Pol politics and business are separate we can do business with our enemy and that's kind of what's going on here and so when you start seeing these problems uh, you, these these uh, conundrums uh, you start to have to you really have to step back and say okay what is this world well internationally you know uh, we're, i've told you and this all keeps going round and round about self self uh, self proofs the united states abandoned this so-called international law it also abandoned the very, very thing that it originated, the Lieber Code that was made international law by convention, at the Hague Convention in, what, 1899, and then again uh, uh, adjusted or amended in 1914 or something like that. And so the United States abandoned that in that murder memo. And I talk about this periodically on the Twitter and, and other, anybody who wants to know. Uh, you, this is just guidelines. And uh, aban the United States abandoned all of that. And, I, and then you tie that to the, it's the war of terror, and then you you have to start understanding that and not thinking I'm just talking a, you know, just an opinion. This is the condition. And they did this on purpose in order to be able to break down all borders and just wantonly ravage the world. And there's some people that don't want to see the ravaging. And it's interesting. It's in interesting places why. And uh, maybe they have their own reasons why they don't want the world ravaged either. They want to be safe and like anybody would. But they also want to be left alone to do whatever they've been doing to, to, to other people too. So Again, Machiavelli is kind of an interesting read. You need to go read that. This is what's partly going on here. But I don't get lost in all that. I read it. I understand uh, bits of it. I understand the dynamic. And, okay, that's a, that's an evil. That's a truth, but it's an evil. Okay, do I want to agree with it by shutting up, or do I want to find the evil where I'm at and stop what I can? And that's kind of where I've laid off, uh, uh, laid up in doing, uh, put my energy. And I don't know. It's a slow go, but, you know, and a little bit of an offshoot. We were just, uh, my, my colleague and I were just surprised that a group, a co county that we've been working with, they quietly were working on a project that we advanced five years ago or so. They were working on a project to fix a real serious problem in that county. And uh, they they solved, they fixed it. And they did it with the guidelines that were given without any further without any further guidance from us. And so we were surprised to see that they came up with a plan at all. It was really, really kind of exciting in a way to watch a government get back in and function properly and again you say government can't function no it can function real well it depends on where it targets itself and we we've got gave a receptive people the idea that it's best to pro to support your producers as i keep telling you about the primary foundation of a society that expects to be be able to live in peace and tranquility amongst its people needs to be a productive society and that's not at a point of slavery well, I guess you could be considerate. It depends on how you defend it. But when you put yourself, your mind, you're a slave to that. I guess we can use that in that generality. But I'm talking about actual slaves here. If you want to not make your people slaves to the government, then you have to give them the the value. And you can't. And this is the problem with the with the extortion called taxation. But that's a whole other problem too, because that's another ignorance. And as I keep telling you about, when you start seeing that the production can't be addressed against the government then uh, they have no power at all. And when you start understanding how many how many chasms there are distance between you and that, that tertiary economy called government, it, wow, you know, it's what's what, what, how have we gotten so far offline? But uh, this uh, getting back to the government of the United States has really went off the track here, and no one stopped it, and maybe nobody could, and not even a group of people, because this thing has gotten so powerful. 
on a on another lie, this thing called the full faith and credit, like there's no like there's a bottomless pit of money. Well, then they went to fiat, and then they went to derivative economies. And I told you at that time, forget it, it's over. That the part about this, the, the money is over. And then you heard that also all this money that they spoke, supposedly this fiat that they say goes through government and services and goods and things is actually GDP. Not many people, if I've heard anybody talk about all this stuff on how that's flipped everything on its head. And if you're not, if you still think you're standing upright in this kind of an environment and you keep thinking that you're going to walk through the world, uh, you think you're walking on the ground and you're not realizing you're inverted to it, we're not going anywhere as a society. Or we're not going to be the public, the people, the population that was required to keep our peace against the very government that was supposed to keep it. And again, this is a discussion that I wrote here. We, we filed and got del it was delivered to the Supreme Court. We're talking about the failure of remedy on both ends. Now, I'm telling you folks, I told you this is a serious observation. I don't know if anybody's going to appreciate this. You don't have a remedy for a harm done you. Or you don't have a remedy for an exaction put on you by the government. You don't have a land of law. You don't even have a governmental establishment. And what I've been telling you about an occupied country and an occupied people, now that, that's, kind of, that's even diminished a whole lot. You literally have no authority for laws. And when, finally, when people finally figure out what I've been saying uh, and... Uh, I mean, really take it to heart. It, it could be a really, a, well, first it'll be a mind blower, what it really all means. But it'll, it will is freeing, a whole lot of freeing as well. And then all you're going to have to do is the minimal dimensions, that, uh, the the minimal population that's out there to keep you uh, in, in, in chains uh, will be nothing to deal with. But until you have the right obs observations of all that, you you want to continue to believe you have something to fight. And so you hold out really interesting observations and you make little things in your mind about what you do otherwise and you think that that opinion is just good enough to do what it needs to do and again it's a kind of a an interesting lullaby you tell yourself because I'm not getting beat down by the government and I I rail against it in words that's enough and it's not because they again they you know they were they came to take those people they came to take the other people and then they came to take me and there was no one to help me uh, we're supposed to be helping ourselves if we intend it. Now, so we can all be a divide, divisive on how this all works, or we can figure out that we have a common, literally the common enemy. It, it doesn't have to be reinvented. It's called this government, and it uh, can work and function. So I've got evidence now. All our work for five years in one county developed itself into an answer for the county. It was really kind of nice to see. And it, it, it ends up doing a very big work. Uh, all, and they did that with with just a, some guidance on some information. So, when I, again, when I say you guys get involved, anybody find something in your county you want to make right, bring the quality information, become someone that they can rely upon for the information. Don't make outlandish claims at all, ever. You don't have, again, we, we live by this, this uh, creed, if I can call it a creed. We don't have the luxury to be wrong once. We don't have the luxury to be wrong once once and so we be take we take what we do really seriously not to violate that that's a law of nature i can just tell you that and so far so far so good that's a good enough information and quality information that people can rely on it to the point they feel confident to start employing it themselves to do good and this is inside a government for those of you that think that government's always bad as I told you, I saw what government could be when I realized what a mining district was. The good, you know, the good ones. Yeah, there's lots of no nonsense the stories that happen with people that think they got bigger, they're bigger than they needed for their britches. But it doesn't matter. It's a, you, we can all let that though the excesses control our mind, or we can say, well, this is the example of what we can use, so that we don't have to try and reinvent the wheel, if you will, if you if you please about about this. We just take the good parts and take the parts that people that grab the and tried to break up parts of it for their own good, get rid of those parts, mend those and put it back into get the thing back into into shape. But, but so this so the United States government is, is blown up. Uh, I I've told you there's a, a real strong proof for the fact that we don't even have a United States government, United States, and there's certainly not a United States of America then. 
and there's no organic establishment because they threw it all out and they did it on the mur murder memo. I told you how that definite that di dynamic was. So they, it, it's clear to me they had they also mentioned in there it was not an opinion now that like I had been thinking before that there was going to be no law. They now declared there was be no law. They weren't going to follow international law. And so that then we now were we're in the time of the war on ter a war of terror by the United States government and so-called coalition the so-called willing. Here we have uh, information now, you know, the Carnival Mirror, folks, again, they're willing to do this to the terrorists, they're willing to fund the terrorists in your own country. United States green lights missiles for Al CIA, Al-Qaeda-linked, Turkish-backed, Salafi jihadists occupying Syria's Idlib. The United States green lights missiles for al cia duh. The same, very thing that we were told that we went to war of terror over. Emboldening like, the Turkish invasion of Syria using the militants in a different way. We can go through all this Salafi jihadists. You can track that. That's important to keep track of. They, they put all those words to, to, to kind of, to me, to, to confound the point. The Turkish backed, the Tur Turkey through its militants is occupying Syria's Idlib. The United States is cool with that. The United States is so cool with that, it's going to give missiles to the very terrorists they claim started the war of terror. That they use, the government uses as a war on, they were on terror. They said the LCAA caused, or caused or created the war for them, the war on terror. And in fact, they're utilizing it to continue the war of terror. And so what they're doing back there to occupy a, a country and aid and support terrorists with high-tech military equipment is the same thing they're doing, they're willing to do, inside this place they call the United States of America. It's, again, we have a place we can see on the map. That's what they're doing it to. But see, there's really no borders because they're doing it everywhere. And coalition-willing countries are in on it. And I, and I want, you know, I don't know what people think about this. Maybe it's, oh yeah, we know that. This, you have to understand this dynamic because if you see, and you understand this almost convoluted attack, and the willingness to support it, you'll begin maybe to appreciate what they've done to the country, the United States of America. The country of the before the Civil War, the countries in federation. Each state was a country in federation. Remember, and I can't. I wish I could find this case. The states are abroad each other. No, I'm not talking about slang for female. They are literally talking in in admiralty. There, they're talking law of the ocean in international law. That these states, even though their land can, can connected in law are abroad each other there's there's a imaginary oceans between all these states that's what it used to be that's here where you start to see the commerce among states see there was this fiction created that the government of, uh, would uh, the federal government would reg make regular the commerce between the countries of this called the states and so that's all changed all right we told we were told by that in the tim's case recently if you didn't hear it from me behind the woodshed, you just heard the Supreme Court admit to it. We are fundamentally changed. And this is uh, what I'm trying to expose to you, that you start looking at the federal government as this occupier now, without law. It does what it can get away with. And it does it that way, well, why? Why? Because it's only got a few people to do it. So they can take a small number of people and occupy all, this, all the countries, called the, the states of the Union. And we've kind of lost this line of thought. Now, given this is the occupation and they do whatever they can to maintain the occupation, I'm telling you that this little story right here is really a monstrous um, exposure. They're willing to terrorize you, support terrorism in your country in order to keep control, and they're willing to use third parties to do it. If you don't think this immigration deal is one of those actions, if you don't think that this alternative dispute resolution is the acceptance of a, the Udall Foundation, is an acceptance of a foreigner in your country 
a, a militant to terrorize you, and they're going to support that. You're kind of missing the story and the importance it tells me. If you can appreciate the subtlety that this is working in and how, how it is I'm identifying how this is wor working. And I can't, uh, anybody who can see this starts to, we, we, we just do things different. And we have to drag our, so we're cl literally clawing, so it takes so long clawing out of the stinking abyss that we were slowly allowed to go into and uh, we're accelerated. The government's doing this. And so these stories here, I'm taking a little bit of time, maybe too much. Uh, the government of the United States is willing to abandon all law, abandon all establishment, abandon uh, anything you ever thought would have been given, bringing you the ability to have peace or remedy when a violence comes against you. Oh, I'll hear you talk about the non-aggression principle. I'll hear you talk about, uh, about all kinds of things about being peaceful. There's a violence on you you're not stopping. And it can be identified in a lot of places. And uh, so that if you're not addressing that violence, you're agreeing to it. There's a pretty harsh reality of direct and um, non-limited liability. Strict liability here. And that's what a man and a woman suffers. See, the legal entities don't. So all you want to, want to talk about straw men, but you want to try and work inside your mental capacities to maintain a limited liability, you're missing, you, you, you violated your own mind, you violated your own thought process. There is no rationale that gets you there. And so U.S. Greenlights Missile for CIA, the very, very group that, that supposedly fired up this uh, thing on the war of terror, and then now uh, for, uh, that the government used, and, and you, we were told it's a war on terror, they're giving them missiles. We heard this story over and over, but this was attached in a different way. I want to show you that they'll attach, they'll give these, not just CIA, but these are now Turkish supported. That means NATO is in Syria still through Turkey. Lots of uh, false fronts on what's actually going on, I guess is what I want to focus a bit here on. And then they come in and they blame the very people that are trying to call out and bring peace back to their own country. They call that a subversion. It is what I see, absolutely see in the alternative dispute resolution and what you know is smart cities and what you know is sustainable development and what you know is code enforcement, international codes, standards, standards and norms. See, standards... There you go. There you're back in international law. There's no law. It's simply what they call standards and norms and uh, something else. Go look it up. You find it. You find it. All you got to do is look up international law. I think Wiki will give you the, the first sentence will tell you all about what you need to know. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just the agreed condition that people that have the ability to kill millions of people each uh, agree to get along in that regard. But they can abandon that at any time. And you got to really get that in your mind. I guess I'm thinking about a lot of stuff here. I'm going way too slow, I guess. But you have to really get these points in your mind. These are realities that people just disagree. They just don't put much power on it. When you're dealing with them, I and this is where you see court cases that say, well, when you deal with the government, that's on you. If you get duped, that's your fault. When you start seeing cases like that, you can't disregard that. Most people do. Well, they just complain that it's like that. You have to take the condition and put it inside practice on what, how you're going to deal with that untrustable force. It's un, non-trustable. There's no way to trust this thing. And then you might start to understand why I become a lot more what they might call, hard, they'll call me hard-headed. Well, you just don't want to give an inch. That's right. I don't want to compromise a dang thing because you're a criminal. You can't be trusted, even though you're supposed to keep the public trust. Another conundrum. So you can only know that they're trustable as far as you can throw them, I suppose. We see all the evidence. All, I, I keep thinking about why people are even missing this. We see the evidence every day. When you hear a cop doesn't have to know the law, even though he took an oath to uphold it, why didn't your mind say, hey, we've got a problem here? And then I come along and say, yeah, that's a problem. And here's how it is a problem, and this is how you start to check it. And everyone who heard that didn't step up and write a letter and gauge that point because they didn't want to be the next victim of this too smart to be a cop, too psychologically stable to be a cop 
entity with a gun that has no sense whatsoever, isn't held to any sense, and you didn't go back to your your local enforcers and say, you better shut that down, I have to think about y'all. What, what do you, would you like living in, the, in an open-air video game? Anyway, I'm getting off, way off point. These people, the United States is is going to arm uh, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda. Get back to the Mujahideen in Afghanistan and how they induced Russia into there, and you'll see how this thing starts to develop. You'll see the the how just vile this whole world condition is. And the United States government is supposed to be lily white, ride a horse, freedom and democracy, which is our problem. I've explained all of that. Uh, rule of law and and demo, uh, excuse me, rule of law and democracy. Rule of law is the bar association, and it's global. International Bar Association, go check it out. It's the advisor to the Holy See. Go check out the connection. Go check out all these connections. They're all together, folks. Now, do I worry about that when I'm doing stuff? Absolutely not. That's a condition that sits underwriting this whole thing that causes me to keep focused on how I'm going to walk through this condition. And I get to, folks. I get to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, am I just out there waving a red flag? Absolutely not. I'm not stupid. Not S-T-O-O-P-I-D either. Come on. There's, let's get some intelligence working on a lot of this. Not what you think is intelligence. Actually get the intelligence, then get it in act, get the, get the, the assembly and the, the, syn, uh, the synthesis of it all, and then and, and put it in practice. And going on. The United States Green Lights Missile for al Qaeda to help a NATO partner invade another country to kill people, folks. Kill innocent people. And then blame those people for defending themselves. Is what they're doing to you in the United States in other ways. Again, most people didn't look at the, the detroitification of the United States of America as a, a bomb dropping like they would do it in Syria under the same principles, but they didn't understand that gentrification and uh, these codes and these sustainable cities, the smart cities and the la and the extraction of all your manufacturing out of your country was a, a military attack. You, you didn't notice any of that. Now, I can't say I knew it at the time when I started to see it, but I can tell you, well, since the Detroitification, I knew it. This is 20 years ago, I started to figure things out. They stopped making sense for me a long time ago, and I don't mean just opinion. I mean, this stopped making sense, and I said, well, what is the answer then? I told you, my whole existence here started with five cops fabricating a traffic stop to pull me out of my car and threaten me, almost kill me. I don't know how, I literally do not know why I'm here today. Six months later, the guy they did that to down the road a piece didn't make it that night. And I looked at that and said, there's something wrong. Now, I don't mean just that I got cops in my face. I guess they could think I was doing something, but they fabricated this up in order to do that. And this is not what's supposed to happen in America. America now. Now with a K. Now even worse. And so that was the first clue that was something wrong for me over three decades ago, I think now. And because of that, it made me question lots of things that I was oblivious to like anybody else, but they tell a tale that you'll never really be told anywhere. And the only way you, I can see that we can stop this is if we all stop bickering and fighting and making stuff up and start coming together. We certainly aren't going to do it with agents of change, if you will, that are going to take on something like me, mischaracterize me. The host of the broadcast that was there did not even consider to call me, and I've already been on that broadcast years ago. No, they're agents of change, and they'd rather do the fall. Uh, they used to fall, go continue into the stinking abyss instead of getting to the truth of everything. And and so that's the thing I'm trying to warn people away from doing. Don't get yourself suckered into that, and don't be a sucker just sitting there watching it. The United States is willing to uh, arm terrorists to invade through a third party, uh, using third and ter fourth parties to do it, another country, and kill a bunch of innocent people. How are you? How are you able to think that that's not happening at home? And I come along to tell you how it is happening, even though you don't hear the bombs. You don't see that kind of destruction because they're, it's transparent to you. And when I tell you that, why do you disregard it and decide that? Oh, I've got I got more to think about. 
I, I guarantee a bomb drop out in the street and take off the front end of your house, you're going to be moving pretty fast. You're going to be stunned, shocked, and not know what to do, but you'll be moving a whole lot faster than thinking about how much more you need to know in order to resolve it. And yet we don't put ourselves in that imperative, and we're already there. I remember now something came through one of the I can't remember now what it was. I don't keep track of all this stuff. You know, the, the, no one thinks that the war is ongoing. It's ongoing. They think it's coming. This is the thing, I guess, is another subtle lie. Everyone says the 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 zombie apocalypse. That's one of the things that didn't come up. The zombie apocalypse is coming. The civil war is coming. The war is coming. World War Three is coming. The 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 totality destruction is coming. Folks, you're here. It's already happening. They get you to believe it's coming, so you stand there flat-footed and doing nothing, thinking that you got some time to think about it. You're in the war, and as long as they got you standing flat-footed, they win. They got, And they don't even have to target you. You're, you're useless to yourself, and you're aiding them, and you actually become an obstacle to the rest of the people. We're in the war. The one war never stopped. I don't know why people don't... I'm just sometimes shocked a bit. I don't get responses like in emails that said, wow, I didn't know we were in the Civil War and it never ended. You're right. That proclamation doesn't end the period. I didn't get anybody saying that to me. And so I'm not deluded here that we have any chance. I'm hoping for it, but you all are not responding. You're not responding to the most simple proofs. But you'll agree we've got something to talk about. Oh, tax is theft. Oh, World War Three is coming. Oh, the Civil War is coming. Well, no, it's you're in it. You're in all of it. It's in different forms. And go on here. Now we know the government of the United States will will fund terrorism. If you don't think the government agencies are doing it to you as terrorists, here's your first notice that if you'll just give me a little bit of extension, what they're doing in the Middle East is what the government of the United States will do to you. Remember, the United States is a district. It's not a state. It's not a country. It's a place of government. And it was supposed to be sitting in a sitting capacity. It definitely killed that into killed that capacity or limitation in the in the Civil War, which it didn't end. Then what we did is we expanded that Civil War globally. Remember, the murder memo says we're getting rid of the Libra Code. That came from the United States government. It was the one that was adopted by the international family of brutes. So, I don't know, maybe I spent way too long here. I can't tell you how important it is to understand the underlying things that are going on in the news you're told and apply it today in your land. Wherever you, I'm talking about the United States of America, and I do that because we have this nice land law that I can always rely on to show how quickly government violates its own pre- premises. How I can now show and have, we now have, and we're going to watch whether or not the Supreme Court's going to respond. You don't give these people a remedy, and you attack them without remedy. There's two remedies that you were supposed to provide. You don't have, you, your authority does not exist anymore. I'm going to be real interested to see what they want, how they respond, if they respond. The lack of right response. I'm talking about in law, not my opinion. The rat, the lack of law response will mean you you folks all are complaining about something that doesn't even exist. Another illusion. And they're running this whole thing on nothing. And that is just, you want to talk about where is your consent? There it is. You continue to allow it. And if you think, oh, you can't do anything by yourself, then you better start pulling together really fast and you better start focusing in on certain places to attack as a group of people so they can't take you out because they do have enough people to deal with you one-on-one. Not out in the streets like the yellow vests do it. That's a, interesting. That's good. You know, that's that gives us indication people are fed up. You have to turn inside and show like we're like I'm starting to do and I started to see and now have the opportunity because I think that's it I was prepared to be able to make take the opportunity remember I told you I wanted not to do this but they said here's your opportunity will you pick it up well I decided to pick it up I'm now able to address this very serious problem this whole thing was built on trust as long as you trust they're giving you a remedy and that the impositions they put on you have a remedy and that makes justice in your mind that's good enough and yet you look at the documentation and there is none. Yet 
in none in them there is in you otherwise you wouldn't have that observation that way means you have to find more like you to get together because they don't care they'll tell you that at every turn and we don't tend to work that out so almost shocked to see this not shocked to see it the United States will give to the terrorists they claim attacked you and require all your limitations now since the Patriot all this stuff uh, the indefinite detention is all because of this group they're handing missiles to go through a third party coalition willing coalition member to attack an innocent country and people and kill them is a spirit that is in your land and working against you whether you see that or not another interesting thing came up I find just these little tidbits of stuff in stories we're talking about the Supreme Court last couple of weeks here and Tim the Tim's case and what they acknowledge there that you can even be a commercial criminal and you and they can only exact so much right that's that notice thing in the law about what your penalties will be and they said no we can't you can't take the guys uh, uh, more than what you what the law said that you would for the the, our remedy against your wrong is this fine. Your remedy against that is this lawsuit that says you can't do that. Then we know another remedy that says if they don't have a right at all, we're supposed to have a remedy for that infringement without the law that the government acted on. And we're supposed to have these checks and balances. They're all gone at this point, or at least as much as I can see. They're not gone because we're still pressing it, and there's still an opportunity for those that to, to, to do well. And they, you see, the Tim's case gives us a little bit of a little bit of idea that they can do well. They're well enough, I suppose. And so Justice Thomas is still a justice of the Supreme Court. Comes up with something else. He made some comments in that in that Tim's case. He makes some comments here in another story. Uh, again, to show you the dis, uh, what is it? The the fact that you don't have a an establishment for all your constitutionalists. You actually don't have the establishment you thought. I've been telling you. Uh, that the, the the Civil War changed that, and even so, they don't even follow that, and then they don't follow their statutes even then. And so we you should have seen a problem a long time already, and we shouldn't be bickering amongst ourselves on that. We should be addressing it. Uh, that Justice Thomas says something. Justice Thomas uses a SCOTUS abortion punt to go on eugenics-themed rant. Now, that is a headline that's politically motivated. It did catch my mind because I said, what are they talking about? Well, okay, so I found, uh, run this, this thing down, this story, and f just picked this this report because it, it goes on to say some uh, a very interesting thing of, of a lot of interesting things, and I don't have the time, uh, again, I, any one of these topics I could be talking for hours. It depends on what the interest is, and I don't know that there's much interest when I don't see much response. And so it, it's interesting to me. I think they're this important to talk about. And we can start to just um, rationalize how we think things are going. And I guess part of me, there's lots of little thoughts in my head. If you're going to rail against a government, uh, you should make sure that it's really functioning as a government before you complain about it and identify that it's not actually the government that looks, that's saying it is before you start condemning a government and go after the thing that's going on, not the one that's made up in, in our, our misperceptions. But I would say Justice Clarice Thompson, Thomas penned a 20-page rant, they claim, equating uh, the abortion rights movement to eugenics, which accompanied the Supreme Court's move, and I have a link here for those of you that want to go look at it, on Monday to essentially punt on the issue in a closely watched case from Indiana. Again, Indiana. In his concurrence, Thomas said the court would have to, would have to at some point confront the type of abortion ban based by Indiana in 2016 that was struck down by an appellate court last year. The Indiana law banned abortions in cases where the doctor knows the woman's sole reason for seeking the procedure was due to the fetus's race, sex, or disability. The Supreme Court on Monday issued a procurum order, meaning it was not signed by the individual justices, letting the appellate decision stand. The order said that it, it, it expressed no view on the merits. Remember we talked about this. This is, this is where they don't even enter into what the facts would have concluded. This is strictly procedural. Uh, no, no view on the merits on the Indiana's ban, while noting that no other appellate court 
has weighed the, que the question yet. The court additionally used a narrow legal argument to justify upholding another aspect of the Indiana law that required abortion providers to cremate and bury fetal remains. Thomas took the extra step of writing a concurrence to explain his views that the ban, like the Indiana law, quote, promote a state's compelling interest in preventing abortion from becoming a tool of modern eugenics. The use of abortion to achieve eugenic goals is not merely hypothetical, Thomas said. His concurrence went through many of the favorite talking points of the anti-abortion movement in this regard, pointing uh, to the abortion rights advocates of the 20th century who endorse the use of abortion for eugenic reasons. Now, let me just, there's a lot of politics in, he says, anti-abortion movement. This is not a neutral discussion. But I want to remind us, because I didn't know this at the time, Ruth, uh, in fact, it's very interesting too and ironic, uh, Ruth what Bader Ginsburg actually writes in response and objection to this. Remember, she, for my view, for my inter, um awareness. She was the first I knew that said that she thought that the Roe versus Wade case was for eugenics. That she came out against Thomas's position. But but that's not even the point of this. I want to point out the, the news you're getting is politically motivated. It's not really in the law. And we and they mentioned this thing a couple times. Abortion, abortion, abortion. This thing. What really in law is this? And what I found fascinating was uh, down, I think, down some ways in the article was another statement. And it identifies something about this whole issue. And it identifies something about what's happened to this United States at all. And as I said, you start taking the facts and the, and the things that you build up, you, you apply them to those of you who do read the Constitution, you apply them. And you start to see whether or not what you're finding in, in the reality of how it works with what is supposed to be written down on paper, whether they, they come together. And when you don't, I've been suggesting for years, you can't say what ought to be. You have to accept what is, and you're going to have to work to fix that. You have to work with the occupation that now came over that is not functioning the way it's supposed to. Thomas says, just as Thomas says, a very interesting thing. Now, I don't know who picked, if anybody picked this up or, or not. Uh, first of all, I have a problem. They have a rule. The rule is if one district, uh, uh, circuit uh, makes one decision, that's not enough of a question in law to resolve a problem. That's a problem because that means right off the bat, this is whatever people will put up with. And if it's not money mo any more than one state, even if it violates the law, that's good enough. Is it should have been a problem for you when you heard that. But Thomas goes on to say later on, and he and I'll just do. I guess I do this. Uh, Thomas's concurrence for all of its abortion fire acknowledged that he agreed with the court's decision to not for now take up the case of an Indiana-style ban, so that quote further percolation may assist our review of this issue. Again, look at what how the rules are set up. Further percolation. What is that? See, they're not taking the law and saying what its limits are relative to this thing. That, that should be an objective basis, not based on some set of future facts that would percolate through, filter through the grains to create the tea or coffee that they want to make percolate so that well, they get their mind on what's going to go on, so how they're going to take a judicial branch and make a political point of it, which they're not supposed to do. Going on, however, he, in the end, his, in the end concurrence, noting that although the court declines to wade into these issues today, we cannot avoid them forever. Quote, having created the constitutional right to an abortion, this court is duty-bound to address its scope. Thomas said before referencing the court's 1992 Planned Parenthood versus Casey decision that upheld a right to an abortion. That's Did you get it, folks? Did you catch it right there? Let me read his sentence again, his quote, or the quote attributed to him, and it's in the paper if you go read it, and I did. Having created the constitutional right to an abortion, this court is duty-bound to address its scope. All y'all that uh, think you know the Constitution, 
and uh, maybe do know a bit of the Constitution, what's wrong with that sentence? This is a Supreme Court justice saying, having created the constitutional right to an abortion, this court is duty-bound to address its scope. When we talk about, I've talked, this is a reference that you should be able to know. I talk about this in the context of agency regulations. Agency regulations or rules implement a legislation. And in those rules, they define the scope and the purpose. That it was interpreted, was intended by whom? Now I'm going to move to branch. The legislature. Why do I move to branch? Because legislature in the Constitution is the one that creates the laws. The judiciary is supposed to find the law. Is the judiciary supposed to create a right? So not only do we have a big problem here, a separation of powers problem, which I just wrote to them, said you have a separation of powers problem, so this is indic indicative of, the, of now the judicial branch to do. He admits that they create constitutional rights. That's not their job, folks. They're supposed to interpret the law. The legislature creates the laws under the limitation of the constitutional right. Or prohibition, essentially, in this case, because it's a limited form. Then he says that they have to, the court is duty-bound to address its scope. Well, I just said that rules are interpreted by agency to interpret scope and purpose. Where do I go to say that if you want to see it? Those of you that want to just take a quick little check, it's, uh, where is that, uh, 43 CFR 3809, I think is where you're going to find it. 43 CFR 3809. You'll see, look in the the question and answer situation that Reagan gave to all the plebes to, because we're too stupid to figure it out. They get to answer, ask a question and then they get to answer it on this uh, explaining how these rules work. They'll tell you in the rules at 3809, it's a simple place to find it, is the only reason why I'm citing to it. It says what the purpose and the scope is. That's an agency, executive branch, implementing through the authority of the executive branch the law that was created by the legislative branch. This justice says that the Supreme Court created the right of abortion and will determine the scope. My question then, not only did it not say in the Constitution it can create a right, it can acknowledge one that's in the law, but it can't create it, and, and then its limit, its extension, its purpose, is stated in this word per scope, it's the function of an executive agency, not even the legislature. And so I don't know what people see in all this, and I don't know what it means to anybody when I say that. I guess it's tied in for some of you all to start noticing. We've been told this place isn't what it was. Now, it doesn't mean it can't get back there, but it means it's been taken from there. And you're given what you gave. And when you don't insist on what you were gave in the original, they'll take and keep giving you something else. And right now we've got a condition in, nine, in 2019 that a Supreme Court justice says back when they created the right of abortion and now they're going to become a functioning agency in the executive branch in order to tell you the scope of that. And that's their duty. If you didn't miss that big problem. This is a, these guys sometimes do talk in very powerful ways. Every word could mean something. In this case, I think it does, but it's not a good thing that you do the analysis. Those that may have been... Uh, didn't want to read about the abortion. I have nothing, you know, my mind isn't even in this, but the way it was developed, the propaganda being set up as a political statement in a publication kind of got my mind. Then I saw Thomas, he was in, instrumental in talking about Tim's uh, making some points. Well, what's going on here with the, oh, why is he coming more in the news? And then they were promoting that this may be uh, Justice Thomas's day. This is the this is where he weighs in, he makes himself important, he gives himself a name right here. He's, he's been a justice for a long time, and these are the issues he's going to be coming. It's like a promotion. Okay, it caught my attention. But to then read inside this the, the, the nugget for me, maybe not for you, it should be for you, the nugget that here again you're giving notice that the Supreme Court believes it can create rights, constitutional rights and then can address in executive agency fashion the scope of that right. Should be very interesting in the minimum. 
but should also tell you that you don't aren't existing anymore in the way you thought it was. And I'm saying that it being that the case, if you continue to address these people in something they are want to be blind to or made themselves blind to, the, the limitations, you will never, ever get to where you're going to be seeing that country back again. You'll ne Because you'll think that these guys are going to give you the answer. Remember, Scalia said, well, they brought the question to us. Why are you mad at us? We gave you an answer. What did I tell you? For those of you that say, oh, you got to engage the system. I say, engage the law so that you don't engage the system. That also happens that, interestingly, if anybody's not put this together, it also interestingly addresses the other subversion and, and destruction through alternative dispute resolution, which cannot bring the law. Isn't that interesting? One answer solves two major attacks. And then what are you doing? The ultimate resolve is that you stay away from the jeopardy that these people get you to buy into on the notice that they apparently believe they can make a constitutional right. And then they can determine the scope. And Frumpy's saying about, remember, Clint Richardson's analysis on these fetuses. Yeah, I, w I was talking with him when right before he did that about the fact that Roe versus Wade was about creating industry. Absolutely. Roe versus Wade also has an interesting built-in condition that needed to be adjusted in time because that decision's made, if you make it medically, which they're trying to take the medical now away, the state just determines. So it's not the right of a woman and her doctor. That should that should be made that should be inviolate as well, and I don't see a talking in the Constitution, so that's inviolate by 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 its by nature, I would say, except for this little dangling chad called a license to a doctor. But notwithstanding that, that decision should be private between the doctor, uh, the health needs of the woman and the doctor, and the, and that condition. Uh, but Clint Richardson was talking about the supply of fetuses for parts. Yes. Uh, and Roe versus Wade, in my view, before that, uh, before his expansion, when he started to look into that, was Roe versus Wade was the institution of that and to check the time. Because there has to be a statutory timing. Again, it only went so far. Now they've expanded that. Why? Because the product need is expanded. And so, yes, thank you, Frumpy, for reminding me. He, he did an extent, he expanded on what I had, uh, we, uh, I had I'd found was the Roe versus Wade was not what we were told. It's not the right of abortion. It was simply the institution of when uh, taking, creating the ability to take parts as parts, folks, as you now hear is being used, and for and all these interesting but odd, uh, even evile things that are going on, uh, as technology comes along, that's what that's what Roe versus Wade. The effect of it actually was. They they sold it to you as a rights of abortion. He's talking that they created the right of abortion. That's not actually what happened. They created the, another industry in fetal tissue. And now they've got technology that they can take that tissue. They need that tissue right up to seconds before the birth. And you saw New York take the lead to go ahead and do that. And then you see the response, the pendulum swing of states saying, well, we're going to kind of limit it. And that's really the point. What they're limiting it to is whether they, is gonna, whether they decide when life starts or not. As soon as, as, soon as something becomes legally ac accessible, that's where that line goes. And the more tech, the fast, the better technology gets, the m more definite that line gets. When they did it back in the 70s, they had a, they, they didn't know quite how late they could do it and still do it. Now they got it up to the point where if they don't care about the baby coming out, because they don't, the team, it's not a person that they have to recognize. Then they can take it out as long as it doesn't. They got it now that they can take it out at any time, actually. And so it's a whole different analysis. This is bottom line. This is business is business. This is the business of doing business. These, this government has not. I said it's not what you think it is. We've been being told all along, but didn't have these these uh, these markers before as we do today. And I've said I started this broadcast. If the government's willing it to to fund and, and aid and abet a terrorist in another country, they're willing to do it to you. They have an agenda, they're running. Whether we'll ever figure out totality of it, that's what it does. It runs agendas. And if you happen to be in the way, or if you happen to be something it can exploit, then it will. 
And until you become that, that one teacher that says, hey, you're not supposed to shoot me with an airsoft gun to scare me into doing the right thing, attacking somebody, you, uh, then until you become that teacher that says that wasn't right, we, we suffer. Most everyone will suffer these things. And the only thing, as I say, I, I don't know if I have the answer. I'm just saying when we address these things the way I have learned to do, no one becomes and in, goes into jeopardy. We stop, for those people that do it, we stop the harm. Now, you can complain about all, and you can kind of have your own method, but when you keep having that same complaint over time, I'm wondering how many times you're going to beat your head against that same wall thinking that something's going to change. And yet I'm, I've got some, every, we just got anybody that, that deals, we deal with when they do it correctly. Those people are not in jeopardy. In fact, it's kind of a joke. We don't, it's, a, it's a quiet joke. We don't like to open up, we don't like to make a big deal like, like rubbing some nose in it because the power that you're up against is powerful enough to, to come and hurt you. But we, we deal with it in an open la- la- way that, that you're n- likely not going to get harmed. The things I talked about generally, like police and stuff like that, it's a little different, but not really different. It's only li- really d- different because you're not, uh, like for the miners, he's got a property that that's central to a place that, he, that everybody knows where he's at. When you're dealing with the police, you it's, you could be anywhere that you don't know that they were at. That's the only distinction. And it's a little you deal with that a little bit differently. And I'm not talking with the condition. I'm, I mean, with the the event or potential event. I'm talking before that. You go down to the you deal with the with the administration of this of this place. And so. Interesting comment. Having created the constitution right to an abortion, where was the authority for that, folks? Unless, and if, if they do believe that, and they did do that, and they don't change that and check that, then you can't say you're living in a constitutional republic, and yet we were guaranteed that. And that means, at that point, we have some work to do, and all the complaining in the world is not going to change that at all. Uh, moving on, this, I guess we can keep moving here. Enough said there. Just interesting. That story actually she needs to be read. I I wasn't interested too much about the abortion, except for I am interested in doing initial research. Do things like you see Clint Richardson. You find these truths out. That's what I'm interested. I'm aware are they taking this lie they've been selling, chucking down everyone's throat, and everyone's been swallowing it. That's really partly what I was reading. But when to see that the government itself, uh, through the judicial branch, creates law, then you're not limited to law being created. Uh, through the organized establishment, that means you must not be in the organized establishment. If you continue to address that, the organized establishment that ought to be, you're going to lose. They don't care. And there's so much proof about that, I don't even have to say uh, say more. And that's why I, I work, let me just go back to the point of the savings clauses. Those are the things that are in, understood in writing that they do have to acknowledge. Everything else they don't. So unless you can find a savings provision somewhere, you're likely going to be barking down the wrong road and spending a lot of time for really nothing. And when I got to the point where I really started locking all that down really nice, the government, the it's not the government, it's these, these people in government. They stopped responding. They just stopped responding. And so, I don't know what else to say. I mean, people could fight with me, argue with me. They can mischaracterize what I'm saying or doing. Until you do what I'm doing, uh, you really don't have an opinion. I know that. So you can talk all you want. I just look at someone who's just, I, you're just telling me you don't know. You're just it, being ignorant or you're being divisive or you're just doing something that's not constructive or whatever. It's just not, it's just not where you need to be. And I really don't have more of a thought of it. I just kind of take a notice of things. I don't, I've, uh, maybe before I might have engaged it. I just don't engage this stuff. It's not, I've got so much more energy to have to spend somewhere else. I just don't have the, the time and the energy to deal with really being S-T-O-O-P-I-D, notwithstanding all the vociferous discussion about how that uh, anyone may not be. Because at the end of the day, you turn off that computer, what happened? What did you do? How much closer was that little, how much closer were you to that res- resolution? How much closer were you to be surprised that someone else took your suggestions and made the re- resolution you would have never been able to do on your own, and you would have never been able to do at all, actually? Like what were you, the... the the pleasant gift that we just found out about one county taking earnest what what the law is, understanding that they could do that, and and resolving a serious problem for themselves. And I don't mean that. I say themselves in the context of the people of the county, not not the institution. Anyway, so you won't. You just. I just know you don't know. 
I just know that you don't know. And it may sound arrogant, but it's just there's a certain function that goes on uh, that it's kind of like you. When you all get in the same boat, you know you're in that boat. And when you're not in that boat, anybody that's not in that boat and you're not supposed to be in that boat can see that. And you can tell all the stories you want about what's going on. You can make all the excuses, but you're still in that boat and you're still not going anywhere. You're still not doing anything. Don't, don't dare put a paddle in the water and try to make a direction. I mean, that's just too much. And yet there's evidences that everywhere that things can be changed and brought back and adjusted and things that have been really taken away for a long time brought back with some effort. And I don't know. I would hope that some of uh, my listeners who have been involved in the efforts to, not, not because I'm saying so, but because I hear you all say it's an important issue. Uh, again, moving on to what Supreme Courts might do and what they might say. Now we move into the state and this thing with cannabis. Arizona Supreme Court, cannabis concentrates protected under medical marijuana law. Uh, now, I told you a long time ago, for all of you that were in cannabis, that you best go down the track of the medical side first because it was too seriously questionable down the other recreational side. And so here, here we see directly medical marijuana was addressed by the Arizona Supreme Court. What was interesting, I also told you on the legislation I found, which appeared to be written by lawyers specific to a future industry, not you, what you wanted, but a future industry, that extracts had been pulled out, concentrates had been pulled out of protection. And I said, there's where the money's going to be. So those of you that are looking and listening, go in there and you're going to find probably where there's going to be some money there. And also... You're going to find that, it, as they're now finding out, that this this medical side, C, what BD, it, it is not the thing that is actually regulable. Now, that's a little bit, that's coming along. It's coming, no one's really taking that up, but that is coming along naturally. It's taking longer because no one jumps in on it. The super, Oregon, um, excuse me, the Arizona Supreme Court just announced a landmark decision relating to medical marijuana in the state. Specifically, the court rules that extracts and concentrates are legal under the terms of the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act. And so I would, and there's a link here, I would suggest those of you in marijuana and other states that want to make sure to start moving this part of this forward because the federal government's not making this easy and the state cops are not making it easy, easier even for the hemp that has none of this stuff in it. You either are involved directly or you just want to see that this gets better done better so eventually if you get into the medical and or recreational, you can just stop thinking about it. That, you know, this is what I say. I don't understand why more people are not jumping in on this if this is your thing. So that, go to the Medical Marijuana Act and read their act and then apply it to your states and see if they have the same condition. The decision concludes what has turned into a protracted legal battle that for years put medical marijuana patients in a precarious position when it came to the use of concentrates. The very thing I told you the states I, I saw were ex, 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 um, accepting from this thing. So remember, we've heard, it's been, this is another conundrum where a law will say something, and yet the Supreme Court back says, despite it saying that, you can still do it. This is one of those things. So those of you that are interested in this, I looked at this and said, okay, well, here's the, the occupier extending to you all, and I think this is more of an agenda of a future mind control as well, uh, and this is probably directed at the little ones. Uh, why they're resistant on the medical side, I don't know. That the medical side becomes a question to be relieved of the op uh, position is kind of interesting. Now, this is not a question in Arizona. Those of you in every other state need to look at what they did here. Get the Arizona Mar Medical Marijuana Act. Compare it to your state's act. See if the clause there for the exceptions are in the concentrates and see if it's a similar discussion. Maybe even get the court case filings. And those of you that are interested in cannabis, in particular the medical non-THC components and you want to either get that uh, let's see the government's wasting time and energy and the cops are getting people in trouble you want to jump in there then do it I mean here's the here's your starting the, the, here's the starting decision for the one state that, that includes those concentrates that I told you that there was some in, future industry that was going to take a monopoly on that so I'm speaking to you to, to say you're going to have to interject yourself for those of you who, want, who think this is important? And after seeing what the what the what the CBDs do, I mean, it's or CDB. I don't even know. At any rate, it doesn't matter. Not that it's there. The after seeing what they do on the medical side, this became much more of a heinous a heinous encroachment by the state. 
and you, this is, I think, an important work to get in if you're interested to start with. And this is a bunch of miracle marijuana patients that were out, uh, were were infringed where there was no right. See, this is the problem about you realize too. I keep telling you this: if you don't have the right up front, if the presumption is against your guilt, then you're not living in that in that uh, due process society either. And so that has to be changed. And because they make a decision on this, I think it's still indicative of a wrong they didn't actually make right. And we also know this is all under legalization. Again, executive rule. They determine the scope and the purpose, just like the Supreme Court Justice has told you the Supreme Court does for abortion and other things. And so, how much more do I say? Um, the important uh, uh, turnout on this, in the medical side, understand that distinction here, and understand that they went after and they're gonna, they tried to grab the concentrates. The Arizona uh, Act uh, would include to you all who are interested. I think this is a very key thing you need to go after to make sure you can extricate from future industrial monopoly these concentrates that for my my position is simply nothing more than an extract that I would do in any any herb, any plant that I'm looking to take benefit from for its properties in a concentrated form. And so to me, they're, they're infringing on my right to produce for myself, the way I look at it, that I'm not interested in cannabis right now. Uh, I just, I guess I'm lucky and I'm b feeling blessed that I don't have a problem with all that, that I need to look at it. In fact, I feel pretty good that I don't have to look for lots of stuff. But I know that I, out there in the world is this natural stuff that I understand. I used to be a whole lot more into it. And to be told by a government that has no authority over the production of that to me and then have a Supreme Court say, well, I had the right anyway, is something you all need to step up and say, yeah, we had the right anyway. Force that side in. Your silence to all this is not going to do that. They continue to make it so that you're going to be under the gun no matter what you do. And in the future, it's not getting any better. And here's how they're going to also do this thing in the subtlety. You want to start talking about, really start to look at splitting hairs. The TSA just updated its rules to allow CBD oil on flights. But you've got to be very careful on this one. And please do not just take this absent and jump on a plane with your CBD oil. Because I think there's a trap in here and they kind of let, they kind of make, make a comment to this. But I told you before that there's a big problem with the federal government and the FDA and the CBD and the uh, putting that on the schedule one and all that stuff. Well, the TSA just said it can allow it. But you gotta look for why. And this is the trick and this is the thing that's gonna get a lot of tr people in trouble. Over the Memorial Day weekend, the Transportation Security Agency, TSA, made an important update to its website. Hemp derived CBD products may now be carried on airplanes, but only under certain circumstances. Big but. Bertha, right here. Be very careful on this. Do not take this information lightly. The important update has been needed after the 2018 Farm Bill legalized hemp and its derivatives federally. There's your clue words that you're going to have to be bringing in to verify and validate that any, even outside of Arizona, Arizona, maybe even inside because of some of these limitations. And then even so against the TSA, what did that farm bill actually do? You have to know the words. If any of you, I talk about this stuff and I'm only hoping people are interested because I see lots of people in the chat room that seem to always be interested. I don't see them doing much, but they're interested. That there's an attack going on. All of, They're setting the foundation right now, and they have been. And I told you that in the legalization terminologies. It was all there to set up a, a position of control and future ability for the government to come in and steal your stuff if you weren't industry. Or you couldn't look like industry. That's another thing you could do, which is, again, the Panama Papers thing. If you want to act like an elite, go and do what the elite does. That's what they do. Do it. That's the problem. It's just filing paper. Learn what you're doing. The important update here is from the Farm Bill. Go read the Farm Bill. Find out what its definition there. The, the states may not be may not allow um, what that federal bill does. I said when that bill, I said told you that when that bill came through, that's going to be the guiding light. Why? Because this whole thing is underneath what? Not production, but commerce. Improperly so. So you have another step if you are applying what I'm telling you. But be careful. 
relative to that farm bill, relative to how an agency determines that scope and purpose, not the Supreme Court, the agency. So this is the other thing. There's a whole there's a whole due process thing about that discussion, that decision, that, that statement that uh, Justice Thomas said. There, I mean, it, I can't, my mind went blank. Not did, did it go blank? There's just so much to say. I mean, this is supposed to be promulgated through a process. How did the Supreme Court do that to be determining the scope? Where was the Federal Register rule for all that? The let go back to this story now. So. The Farm Bill is important. TSA is interpreting through it. It says in certain instances, that's the be careful moment right there. The lag in the update has a little likely confused users of both medical marijuana and CBD oil. And on purpose, I would have to say. CBD oil is a, okay, I don't want to discuss that. I was going to read it. It doesn't matter. Losing time. Now, prior to the update, the TSA did not distinguish between marijuana or hemp derived cannabis products, stipulating that cannabis product were not allowed on carry-on or in check luggage. Now, go to the next story because this is where you, they don't tell you in that story what the where you're looking now. What's the standard? What's the big butt, Bertha? What's going on there? What's the limitation? When will I be jacked up? TSA approved cannabis containing epilepsy drug for flights. There. And now, now you're seeing that the FDA is monopolizing this uh, constituent. Now, so what I think, I'm going to look inside to keep you all safer than normal. Uh, I'm going to suggest something here based on that title alone. You better have a pharmaceutically agreed to drug containing it. That is the certain instance that you'll be allowed. Everyone else, be careful. Don't do it. You better get a special letter. and You better figure that out. This is They're promoting that there's been a change and they're not telling you the specifics on what the certainty is and how to avoid getting in trouble. That's a trap. Its guidelines now say that the subject to special instructions, see, here's your specificity, and this is the trap. It's not everything. And this is also the problem. Well, how are they letting one and not the other? That's for you to go challenge if you want to get back your rights from the monopoly that was established for the bottom line. Quote, products, medications that contain hemp-derived CBD or are approved by the FDA are legal as long as it is produced within the regulations defined by the law underneath the Agriculture Improvement Act of 2018. So now you read the act, and now you got to go to the FDA, and you have to look at their regulations. Back to Justice Thomas, where did they do that? To becoming determining the duty to do the scope of a, of a right that they created shows you you do not ever now live in the thing you thought you were brought up into but here's the caveat folks be very careful on this news this is the in a way it's a capitulation but it's not actually yet this is really focusing on their licensing scheme again in commerce as well and they're not lifting the ban, the right you have to do for yourself. And under the way, I would tell you to go through your property rights. And I would do that before you brought any kind of uh, CBD thing on with you anywhere, actually. It keep, keep protected at this point, folks. They're making it a question for a reason. And also, they set this stuff up in order to, they, I don't doubt that they don't have a condition where they're going to set up uh, some sort of thing that you have to protect yourself, and they have all the answers in order to gain the advantage, and you didn't have the resources to fight them for the outcome they wanted. This whole process becomes a dispute resolution as well. And if you don't see that going in, you don't know to stop it, like I, I do. This is the problem, why they can't shut, they can't respond. I shut everything down that I know is there. And so far, I've shut enough down. I know enough of the things that they would do to shut down a response. If you go in there spouting your rights, you're going to lose. If you go in there spouting a limitation on what they couldn't do because they failed, you now have a stop. They stop them from proceeding. Indirectly, you're showing how the right works. Again, this is not direct. This is all an indirect attack. And I'm trying. I've been. I'm not trying. I am telling you. I got to make that correction in my own thoughts. I want to give everyone so much credit. I am telling you 
how this works and I get flack or no one listens or goes away, can't spend the concentration time to do what I'm saying, can't, can't take a few minutes to p put something on a piece of paper and press a stamp anymore, I'm explaining to you and have explained to you how this all works so you don't get in trouble and you move, a, you move an objective forward. And I only say that because I hear so many people complaining, and I give you credit, for, big credit for that complaint. I agree with the complaints. Now I'm kind of wondering, what are you going to do about it now? Make more complaint? That's not a complaint. That's a whining. That's I, I like my chains. I like my, I just want them a little bit softer. Oh, I agree that tax is theft because I continue being stupid, S-T-O-P-I-D, not, not to learn enough about going to find out how I'm not actually that liable to them. Or put the challenge up. Takes a little bit of writing and it's been a press a stamp. Big deal. No one can even do that anymore. Same thing here. They're pressing us with knowledge that's faulty. you got to look for all the limitation words to you because you are guilty before you get going. Yes, that's true. Where did innocence go? I don't know. No, I do know, but not for you. See, I know. I know because I know the record that needs to be made to show they didn't have the right to do what they did. They didn't have the right. I don't even talk about my right. I just say they don't have the right to encroach a subject matter. Now, that was certainly thumbnail, but that's the way it worked. It's not that hard. We get fed a bunch of information and we forget to learn the details. We forget to question the first point. I guess that's my other gripe about it. I mean, I'm real cautious not to do it myself. You can't even enter in an argument that's not proper, folks. You, you give air to it. That's the dialogue. That's the dialogue to consensus. That's the conversation they want to have. Let's start stop talking about stupid stuff and violative stuff and get you to agree to talk about it. How about if you stop grooming me and stop interfering with my life with your criminal interfe interventions? Is a, is a direct answer. That's the law coming forward. That's how you assert yourself. Not being quiet. Not letting them say, oh, because, oh, you must agree because you didn't say so. And then no one knows about that fact that can't happen because they have a system that agrees to it. No, you have to step up. So we're told lots of stuff. We're told something. Oh, be careful and certain. They're saying you can do this. They're changing their thing. But it's only under very most certain conditions. And then the second story tells me, I think, pretty accurately what that's going to be. Only FDA approved. And you already know the FDA hasn't approved everything except the certain chemical, the certain thing that's gone through a legalized process. That's legalization. That's not being free. And that's not recognizing your right of production and the right of the use of all that. Uh, Vince asked, where did it, uh, innocence go? It went in your relinquishment when you didn't assert that they didn't have a right. You are innocent. You don't know that. And you don't actually believe that. And when I pose that to people that are very well rest researched, it kind of gets them angry a bit. Because I speak very directly to where the prejudices are that they still hold, and they're well researched. So if you think you can just do a little bit of research, or even quite a bit, and quite get this, I'm telling you it's a lot of, a lot of a mind, thought, work, experience thing to get out where we need to be. We are really under it, but that's no excuse. Where did innocence go? You gave it up. And you gave it up in part, uh, uh, well, because you, you, don't, you, don't, you uh, would rather argue than, than actually learn the, t the techniques of putting the burden. It's really the flipping of burdens. It's all there for us to know. Uh, going on, being information, misinformation, getting into a, agreeing to a condition without even knowing about being led into the discussion uh, like a lamb to slaughter to an outcome that you buy into that you don't even know you're involved because of something or somebody can uh, was talking to you, gave you some information that you you, you didn't challenge up front. We find, I'm going to move on to a little different subject, but to me it's just all the same disinformation to get you into a position that gets you in trouble. We have to be much more aware of this. We have to be aware of where to call it out. And I don't get into an argument. If their premise is wrong, I don't even wander in. These people that you'll be talking to, listen, a guy that believes that the Supreme Court, he's a Supreme Court justice, and he agrees that the Supreme Court can make a right, might actually be a bit insane. You're not going to talk to that guy too much. Either that or he's going to explain to you, no, we're not underneath that system no more. 
So this is the this is how you have to look at this. And that could be valid. But he didn't say that part, did he? So I'm going to hold to what was supposed to be based on the organic thing, knowing that they just said we're not operating underneath that and I have to address it that way until I can get the better answer. So moving on to information that you enter into, you could agree that they have to enter that they have to entertain that thing in the future. But I'm saying, well, how are how how why are you letting a Supreme Court justice agree that the Supreme Court makes law, and they can determine the ex executively the exec the scope of it? If you miss that, then you aren't capable of mi limiting this government who presumes you guilty while well, your innocence went. Your innocence is in the fact that they're violating everything, and you just have to have a word in your mouth about where and how, not as opinion, where you can document it. And I found the easiest thing to do is in this land law, because it's all written down and in the documents are there in the evidence. It's really simple. A lot less simple on these esoteric ideas called rights. So then you move back, you don't have the esoteric idea about rights settled, so then you move down, what's the, what's the procedural due process problem here? Well, it becomes an establishment problem, and you don't have the right to make the due process. You were supposed to interpret that it was done in the Supreme Court case. In this case here, we finally know where the scandalous ozone-destroying chemicals are really coming from. Now, uh, interesting uh, thing, but you have to know something about ozone. And when they finally got past their little, their little tirade, uh, what was going on there and the potential that they had this uh, so-called crisis pop up right about just after the time when the patents had run out, and uh, the industry needed more uh, no, more protection for their own particular uh, type of uh, coolant. And so the, a bunch of new products came on the line that you're all told you had to use. Because uh, this other uh, hydrofluorocarbons, whatever, chlorofluorocarbons were destroying the, the ozone. Well, a decade later, they found out, well, that's not the case at all. Well, but, yeah, but the industry got lots of money, didn't it? So when you find that part out, then you wonder the, the, the total thing about the where the ozone-destroying chemicals are coming from in the title is a lie. Well, I still want to know, where is the so where is these chemicals coming from that they claim? Well, why have we got these all these chemicals? We're supposed to have laws against all this stuff, right? We're supposed to be globally, environmentally getting better, aren't we? Again, a scam, but I'm, on it. I'm testing that, aren't I? That's what I guess what I'm saying here. It's been exactly one year since United States science reported a mysterious surge in ozone-destroying chemicals known as now, chlorofluorocarbons. Well, that's a lie because ozone didn't do that. You find that's a condition of the orientation of the Earth with the sun. Oh, but they can't recognize the sun because it would blow out their climate, uh, global warming hypothesis. Band of the 1987 uh, Global Signed Montreal Protocol. What's that? Another fraud. There was only one explanation. Somewhere out there is a, in an unknown location. Someone must be must have gone rogue, setting back progress on the ozone hole by a decade or more. Well, I need to stop right there and not waste more time. They found that those that was not the actual cause, and ozone shifts depending on its relation, and it has a variance like everything else. But these uh, these triggered happy people uh, will claim anything as a harm, and then we will get, now make a story today to have you buy into the fact that ozone's depleted by a chlorofluorocarbon, uh, and we're going to go find somebody to track down and, and thump on. And they find China. And maybe their people are doing it. And maybe I don't like that stuff going in the air. Maybe they should take care of it. But to predicate it on this uh, fraud is getting you to buy into a fraud, and that gives you and grooms you for the future of other frauds like anthropomorphic global warming. Michael Mann made. Michael Mann made global warming. He liked to play hockey. And so on this uh, on this story I responded, but 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 CFC caused ozone depletion is 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 as real as Michael Mann made global warming. Another of Mencken's hobgoblins and a stalking horse in a sustainable spaghetti western. Behind the woodshed. Public buy-in to fear by fraud. Then I added this little hashtag looking in the wrong direction with the Norfolk 611. We can keep looking at these people talking and we can buy their fraud, but that's all we're being groomed to do and accept. We're not using a critical mind to say it and then we put the critical mind and all we do is dismiss them. 
and then they keep coming back because we haven't actually engaged in and shut down all of this fraud. And my problem with all this, I've been telling you, if we get this wrong and it is a thing, we're not addressing the problem. What do I tell you all the time, even with the government? If you don't understand the battlefield and you don't address it correctly, you're, you're not going to solve the problem. You're trying to do something that isn't the problem. Oh, you might think it's valid, but that's not the way it works. Same way here. If global warming was a thing and we didn't understand the mechanism and we decided that, oh, we need to put more shielding up and so let's make persistent contrails and we're actually in a cooling condition the people who just did that committed global murder. Now, I would rather understand, if we have it, I'd rather understand the mechanism so that I can, re I can address the mechanism better if it's addressable. Or maybe we just start stocking up on uh, fuzzy, warm muckalucks and jackets. I don't know. The point is, is that if we allow these people to get us to get into the wrong mechanism of a global structure and then we then use that to go thump on something, these people can do that to you. Did you pick that up? If I can say that China's doing it, and they're the one that did the ozone, and I don't tell you that the ozone hole isn't, isn't caused by that, and I get to you to believe that we have found a culprit, and we can punitively harm them, justifiably, then you'll agree with me, and you will go thump on somebody. And I'm going to tell you, they've just done that to you in all this green jobs nonsense, all this uh, carbon uh, taxation, uh, all the carbon markets. That's what that is. A few people have said, we found the culprit. It's you, folks. You caused this global warming. We're going to attack you punitively. And yet, Tim's comes from a group of people that believe they can make law, says, from their own law even, you can't do that. From those that would take an authority they don't have, They've even said that's an extension beyond what they'd agree to. If you allow, if you can see what I'm doing here on actually bringing forth multiple interpretations of something to show no matter what mouse hole they've created for themselves for escape, it's been plugged. There's no rationale at all that they can work, whether it's singularly or in combination, that actually can do what they've said it can do without exposing a problem. And that's when you, this is what I have found, the way you have to think. You have to look at what I, you have to think about what I just said and start looking at the world to find those things I've just said you will find to use those. You have to find, these guys are tricky on how they pulled this off. You can't let them allow you, and I'm talking about things that are kind of obvious, there are way more subtle uh, uh, things that they get you to talk about, dialogue about, offer, the legislation that comes through uh, that, that, that implies that you get to have a debate over, implies a thing that's a fraud. You're just deprived. All you're doing is arguing over how much of that fraud you're going to accept. Not that you won't accept it. And, and that's why I say don't get into an argument. If I don't get into an argument, I also don't create an issue. If I don't get an issue, then the court can't pick it up either. And that's why I keep telling you about how this works. It's so subtle how you avoid the system. But you engage it because that's how it, you engage it through its communication process because that's how it communicates. So there's buy into a, a concept that, oh, the CFC is being produced by this country over here. Let's go thump on them because they're the big polluter of the world. They're harming everybody. And that's all a fraud. It might be that they're producing those CFCs. It may be that it's no good as a pollution in the air. Who wants it, right? But they're trying to put it on an agenda. And so many years later, they continue to push the bad, the fraud, and get you to buy in so that we can now go after the problem. And it's not. It's not the problem at all. The problem is you listen to these, these, these hucksters. I guess, I guess if I can, that's a nice word. EPA cybersecurity weaknesses are going uh, untracked and unpatched. So now you got a the EPA environment. We're all talking consistent here. Uh, the the, the uh, United States agency that would be uh, doing uh, supposedly the, the checking uh, your, that your environment's good. They're actually one of the pillars of the UN Sustainable Development. We talked all about that. They, this is all part of the pro program that you don't even understand. It's right in front of your face. 
you'd understand the EPA is a pillar of the United Nations invasion. EPA cybersecurity weaknesses are going untracked and unpatched. You'd think that they would want to patch that up. You'd think that all this stuff wouldn't want to be hackable. But do you think that the Environmental Protection Agency deals with it? No, they don't. Because this is all just a big setup and a fraud. Uh, there, This is not set up for what you think it is. And it shows you that when you deal with a government that's imposing this UN agenda, which means computers, means the Internet of Israeli things, it means a, a whole a 5G, it means all of this interlocking things, you would think that they be in the environment, the digital environment, that they would want to make sure that you're safe and secure. The Environmental Protection Agency has detailed process for dealing with new cybernetic weaknesses. Develop a plan to remediate, rem they even use the same words, remediate with clear goals and milestones. Then attack the problem. The only issue, those plans aren't being logged, managed, or tracked according to the agency inspector general. This is the premier agency of, of beatdown that can't even keep track of what it's doing. And for me, this was just for, since it's an integral, with all this carbon, all this uh, CFC, all this nonsense of environmental imposition, again, the Clean Water Act was an act to pollute just enough that you don't care. And you have it. And you didn't. On the other hand, it's used as a bludgeon to beat production into, into submission and non-existence. That's a war crime. And this agency, the pillar of the international sphere, cannot even keep track of its own issues through the digital realm, which it's imposing upon you, partly because you allow it, you accept it, you buy it, you plug into it, and that's your life. And then you find out the agencies that are imposing it can't keep track of their own stuff. To me, that's a vulnerability. To me, that's a fraud. To me, that's a whole lot of crime. How many more people will take that report and expand it to a things that they could use? Anybody in property law that's being imposed by this EPA or any agency that's relying on EPA uh, uh, regarding these things, regarding how this is not going on, the dereliction here underneath the cover that it's doing something at all, I don't know where you folks think you, what you're complaining about. This is the start of another angle of attack on the occupier. I mean, it was in one of the cases, too, that I that I was reading, I think Scalia, they, they make comments, the EPA is not, not constitutional. But okay, now we've round out that the whole government's not unconstitutional. Now how are you going to get rid of it? It's a similar but subtly different way to approach that. Because in that case that I was reading, uh, I can't remember the name, Pickett or something, at any rate, uh, they, they don't offer, they, they don't say that they, uh, un, they don't, say in a judgment that the EPA is unconstitutional, they don't come out and say that and deny and, dis and cause its destruction, which means they're part of the problem, the, 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 the court as well. And so you, you start having to say, what, where is the place that we're living and how are we going to have to deal with it? And I say it that way because whether or not you want to agree with it, if you don't address it, it's going to deal with you. You can be anywhere in the world. If this thing is global, it will deal with you. Well, it may be safe right now, but there's something. It's slowly building. It's slowly coming along. Then you won't. And they do it just enough, like this carbon tax. You think that they're going to come to your door, knock down your, knock down your door to get your money? No, no, no. You're just going to pay it down at the grocery store. Well, you're not going to care a couple cents here and a couple cents there. Or your property tax. Oh, they just move it up a couple mil. Who cares? No one's going to notice. And you say, okay, instead of saying, wait a minute, you weren't able, you can't do that. The EPA can't keep track of its own problems in the cyber environment. It's the Environmental Protection Agency. Should tell you all you need to know about this stuff. Now, how you use that, a little different, but still there. Still notice to us. If we notice that it's there to be noticed and that it tells us something, and then take that, what it tells us and apply it is what I've been asking people to do. Moving on, no excuse for that. U.S. city government shuttered by stolen NSA ransomware. So while cybersecurity is a failure at the EPA, uh, the NSA, who lost supposedly lost all that ransomware, as someone picked it up, as I told you would happen, they're attacking Baltimore. And Baltimore complained to the NSA, and the NSA came back and said, don't blame us. 
But Baltimore is suffering an attack through the tools that were given out by the NSA, like I said they were, in order to attack the infrastructure of cities and cause trouble and show you, as you bravely move into the future, that this digital Internet of Israeli things is not going to be the world future for you, and they tell you all the time. The whole city has been shut down over this, and they went to blame the federal government. The federal government said, don't blame us. It was the dynamic I told you was going to come down. Here it is, three years later, I think it is, four years. It's been three weeks since Baltimore City's government was hit by a devastating ransomware attack using a tool stolen from the U.S. National Security Agency. While a cybersecurity consultant told a Sputnik, the city shouldn't uh, keep, should have kept up on basic safety practices. He noted that nothing is ever truly secure, even at the NSA. I guess that's a hat tip to Snowden, who let this stuff out. There you go. Inside job. Fantastic. Now, you're just told by the National Security Administration. <laughs> Can I stop laughing yet? No. I, I don't think I can. This is so ridiculous. Nothing is ever truly secure. And you're going to go into the brave new world being secure in that, folks? You're getting in this evidence. You're giving this, this uh, statement of fact from the government itself. And if you can't take this and go use it somewhere, that they start imposing this upon you, I don't know what's wrong with you all, actually. I really don't. They're giving us the notice of what it is and what it isn't. And I'm saying that you don't have to have an opinion here. You could use the words that they are, the government itself is saying. And I've always told you the first thing to do is to have the government agencies fight amongst themselves. Well, the, the best thing to have happen is that they just admit and confess to the crime they're doing or the failure in their election uh, in the first place. Now, I'm telling you the notice that we're given every day and in the news can be used. If you find something in the world that you want to fix, you'll find a story to give you some, some of the things you need that comes from the other side. If it's a court case, they confess their sins, folks. You pick this up and you start applying it to when they come against you or setting up to come against you. They want to stick you all on this digitized world. They're telling you there's nothing secure. That's a big deal. You don't have to go by your opinion. You don't have to feel that you're being radiated. You don't have to feel it's doing cell damage. No, the security agency said that it's not secure. And when I, like I told you earlier, it kind of all works together. When you find out there's a law without a remedy, that's not a lawful construction. If you find a harm without a remedy, that's not a lawful construction. But that happens to be the world that you live in. That should cause you pause. And if it doesn't, you need to look a little bit closer and stop your complaining first and look a little closer still. There's no remedy against the imposition they're doing is a defense. It obliterates the whole purpose. I've been trying to tell you how you attack security. You obliterate it by saying that there is no defense. If there's no defense, even under administrative rule, the practicability standard from the government side says they can't use that. Now, for all you all, I'm sure I'm talking at really high technical levels here. I'm just telling you what the requirements are under what's going on. Where did I learn it? I didn't make it up. I learned it through doing coordination. I learned it through looking at the NEPA, National Environmental Policy Act. Environment, environment, environment. What's your environment, folks? They're not talking about the air. They're not talking about the water. They're not talking about the bunnies or the trees. They're talking about this environment of government and its imposition and its constructions around you. And around you, they're telling you that they cannot do what they're, they cannot fix what the impositions are that they're doing is your answer to all of this. I don't know how much clearer I can make this statement. Out of their mouth, folks, one little story out of Sputnik, of all places, 
completely consistent with what I told you would be the future and your future going out. They're telling, I'm telling you on this story, you read it, you get this point where the NSA say that there's nothing ever truly secure and they try to bring a security issue against you or try to tell you you got to be something to be secure or bring some, uh, some kind of settlement of, of their fears against you. You've proven that they don't have the right because they can't there's nothing they can do to fix with the imposition they're using. They are now forced to go find another one. They even used the term what there was was the EPA mitigate. Yeah, you got to understand what they're saying there, and they're giving you the part of the answer. Now, actually, it's it's a, it's a joke. This is a joke. I just I couldn't help but laugh a little bit there. They've just told you this whole thing's a setup for the takedown, and the answer is. Exactly that. There is no resolution to this problem, and you got it from the highest authority in the land, right there in that last part of the first paragraph. It doesn't matter the ransomware. It doesn't matter how they got it. It doesn't matter how they leaked it. It matters that the government's responding to tell you, we can impose all of this, but it won't matter. That's your answer. Say, well, if it won't matter, you can't put it on. You have to go find something else. And if I'm telling so, if you don't say that, it will come on, and the impossible will be on you, and the impossible to respond to is on you, and now you're in the condition I've been saying all this broadcast, you don't have a remedy, and you've agreed to that. But then you'll complain you don't, that you're suffering it. You continue it, and you don't have a way out. That's not justice. And you get those foundations in you, you start approaching the problems that way, not by your opinion, the fact, use their own testimony against them, and you're going to be able to come out so much farther ahead. Those that, you, that don't believe that or don't understand or want to continue this question, I've just given you enough right here on how you can take just about any imposition anywhere and actually start to work in it and know nothing more. And yet I get, I get nobody, I get questions. I get uh, not like we don't know. And, and that I don't know. That might be another thing. And I don't worry about that because I can't solve it until I find out a particular instance. But anyway, it doesn't matter. No excuse here for you uh, to, <laughs> to use their words and say, but you can't create anything secure. And you can't protect anything secure. So why are you making all these impositions on me to make things more secure when they won't work? That's a fraud. And that's an extension of uh, beyond what your limits were, even under national security if you can extend it over to there. And then I got this little thing came up, taking steps to maximize privacy while covering the lack of it. It was an interesting interpretation of something out of the New York Times, though. And I guess I can tell you more of a question. I found it very interesting. They tell you what your vulnerabilities is. Again, there's proofs that what they're trying to bring on to you can should be stopped by the fact that it's useless. There's no remedy for the harms they're bringing on you. In other words, so they can't bring them on you. That They also say taking stuff to maximize property uh, privacy. Well, maximize means that it's still not privacy, first of all. Secondly, they gave you a bunch of these tools. I started looking at these tools, the tools they say that, you know, like the tools that got lost by the NSA to allow the attack on Baltimore, and then the, the two agencies start fighting amongst each other, one denying uh, liability, and the other one's uh, saying, well, you didn't do enough. And then the NSA says, what well, you can't do enough. Are you, were you laughing then as much as I was there, folks? I mean, and now I look at an article that says we can maximize privacy, which means we have none, and they give me tools. And as I'm reading through this story, they talk about Chrome, Google Chrome's developer tools that this author uses to see what's going on under the hood. And I started to look, well, they're just, that's the enemy. Why are they going to the enemies? Well, yeah, I guess you need to understand the enemy, but... To use the developer's tools to see what's going on under the hood doesn't stop the problem. You might understand the problem, but you're not stopping the problem. And I started to look at all this this article, and I saw another thing is I just wanted you to see this article. To, to it, I was just given some new, uh, really not anything really much after I read the article, except that it explains how you can... Where are the, some of the major things and vulnerabilities are when you do jump into the digital realm? And I almost got to the feeling that they're almost, and I, I was going to try to engage this a little bit more, but something told me don't click on the links 
and don't engage the results of the tools that they're asking you to use. So I want to extend that to you. It's enticing. It's interesting. I want to know how do I maximize my privacy? But I've already known the answer when it says maximizing means I'm not going to be privacy, being private. The NSA in the other article just told me nothing is secure. We know all this. But my point is, are you going to use that against the imposition that the government's wanting to put on? And are you going to not engage it as much as possible? And I think we know the answer. But my view would be, are you going to do the first one first? Because that's the threat. And, and why am I I'm kind of going down this track today, uh, this information, the two-way, this digital communication that goes on, how, how we get told wrong information, what, what all, uh, a tale of, and, and I told you like the international reflection on the United States in a different, um, is there, and here's another proof of that reflection, a tale of two surveillance states is the title, interesting neutral, st neutral uh, statement, we don't know what they're talking about, but I start, you start reading, and uh, right off the first paragraph, you see that what's out there is the same as what's here. And you can continue denying it, or you can throw your hands up and do nothing about it, or you can start taking the tips I'm giving you to show you how you start to address these things and to, not, and to, to uh, limit or eliminate what the government's doing in a more effective way than anything I've ever seen. A Tale of Two Surveillance States, the latest episode of the Crazy Genius produced by Jesse Brenneman and Patricia Jacob tells the tale of two surveillance states. The first is Xinjiang, China. The second is Brooklyn, New York. Need I say more, actually? No, I don't think so. Because this is what's happening globally. I keep telling you, and if you don't step up to start interfering in ways that they don't see you coming, like showing that they just admitted that there's no remedy, and therefore then that negates and eliminates their ability to impose because there's no remedy. Then you might start seeing how to address even this occupation that I've been telling you you live under, that the Supreme Court admitted, and all this other stuff. And uh, for those of you uh, I'm going to run here, the police to and the TSA-style scanners are doing the CBD. Now they're going to tell you something else. Uh, police uh, to use TSA-style style scanners to spy on people in public places. I told you this was coming. Here it is. This wave, this uh, hex wave, hex like in magic, folks, is all over your life. It's going to be here. They're going to put it everywhere. Why? Because they are utilizing an impossibility without remedy to come after you because they've presumed you to be guilty, not innocent, and you don't know how to respond. And I've been telling you how to do that for over 10 years. And to my dismay, most people will not pick that up. And I, I'm telling you folks, you better start looking if you don't want this to be the future and you want to start to limit it. There's no way to stop it but your engagement. And I say evolutionary engagement. You come at them in ways that they never have seen before that's right there for you to do. And it's not like it's unique, um, original. It's unique only because they're not in law anymore. And you start applying the standards and make those an open record. You don't mealy mouth your position. You don't speak about rights. You assert them. And you assert them by denying that there's an ability to attack that, even in the most severe case, which is national security. I've just explained a bit how that works. I hope you can uh, get, make some sense of that, put it in practice. Let's get out there and uh, start defending ourselves, and for others, uh, definitely. Uh, Grimner, thank you for... What you do at reallibertymedia.com, appreciate that. Jules over at ucy.tv, thank you for what you do there in uh, simulcasting the broadcast and also posting in your website uh, on YouTube. I appreciate all that. All you guys that are doing the rebroadcasting and things, I appreciate all that. I know I don't get any thumbs up or anything. Uh, you get a download, you don't give me a thumbs up. I wonder why you're taking my download, but that's okay. Uh, I need to, we need to get out as the uh, as the media is cutting us out. We need to get out to more people. Uh, but anyway, appreciate all the help and support I can get from anybody to so repost stuff or read, tell people about it, and I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will it.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.